Thank you, Madam Speaker, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. And since I have not spoken when you're on that chair, congratulations. And I just want to speak to a number of things since I sat on the appointment committee. Madam Speaker, I would like just to say a few things and to probably correct some of the aspersions that have been cast upon the committee. Under the chairmanship of uh, Honorable Speaker, which he did a fantastic job to actually chair that uh, committee, you wouldn't have known who is in the ma majority, who is in the minority. I believe because we were also even being vetted by Kenyans on how we conducted ourselves, we asked pertinent questions that touch on Kenyans, and we were from diverse counties and constituencies, and so the questions that we asked also reflected the various needs of Kenyans from across the country, Madam Speaker. It is then unfortunate for members to come and say that we were just playing politics, we were biased, or that even as minority, we are settling scores in this house. Madam Speaker, and I thank members of this house for approving us to go and sit in that vetting committee. When we present ourselves to run for office, we are vetted by the public. They know who we are, they know what we stand for, they decide whether you want them to represent them or not. And so the vetting takes place at the ballot. But when we, we are then presented as a committee to do our vetting, we give our opinion that this is what we think, having sat through long hours. We used to sit from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. And you listen to each candidate. We look at the requirements, both the statutory requirements of whether you have the documentation and the things that are needed, and also whether you fit the office. And that is why we ask the questions. Otherwise, we would just then ask you whether you have the EACC uh, document, you have the good conduct, you actually degrees not even needed for, for to, be, to be approved to be a cabinet secretary. But then we went ahead to ask the questions and to, 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 to really uh, question your suitability, Madam Speaker. And so I just want to, to ask the members as they debate that once we, re we presented and we tabled this report, that was our opinion. You will have yours, and you will even have a bigger one because you will actually vote. And so it will be brought, he, it has been tabled, you will read it, you have read it. You can have a contrary opinion without casting any aspersions to the committee members. And also to my colleagues in the majority side. When now they want, we had a unanimous decision and now wanting to say it was from, from the minority side alone, that is also unfortunate because you, sh you, know, you can't table something and then also want to run away from it or, or to make us look like you know, we're the bad ones and even make the women more bad because it's a woman on it. These are just our opinions and you can have your opinion. And I think the, my, uh, the majority whip by thinking you're helping Honorable Malonza, by bringing issues of her periods on this floor, you are actually making it worse. Because we didn't judge her on that. And I just want to tell you this. Those are not the things we were looking at. And you cannot also bring the issues when it becomes on issues to do with women to trivialize it, to become about our moods, our emotions, our periods, that that day I didn't wake up on the right side of the bed, that's why I didn't answer the questions right. Actually, you are even making it worse. That maybe what we said in the committee, you're, you're actually propagating it. And so when you discuss issues with women, don't trivialize it. Don't go to that level. Uh, and that is just something that I wanted to, to, to say. Madam Speaker, thereof, I would like to, to present to this House that just apart from talking about the three nominees, you will, have your you will have your opportunity to debate and even to cast uh, your vote on what um, the committee uh, thought about. But I just want to say quickly that one of the observations I also noted in the composition of the, of the nominees is that there was no youth, there was no one who was under 35, 
And I believe that there are Kenyans, young people in this country, who can actually um, uh, uh, sit in the, in the cabinet. We also have people living with disability, who are, uh, which is actually in our constitution, that when we, we constitute uh, uh, you know, different boards, positions, cabinet, I do hope that His Excellency the President will then consider people living with disability with the subsequent nominations in PSs in, and, and other positions in boards and even the young people of this country. And since he didn't meet his promise when he signed the charter of 50-50 uh, uh, in gender, I hope then he can do it also in the subsequent, uh, in the subsequent nominations. But so that as I, as I finalize, there are various issues because it was not just about who has been approved and it's also wrong to say that we just rejected as the minority some because they were politicians. We also approved some politicians. So, you know, you can say what suits you, whether you're uh, supporting or opposing. We also approved uh, politicians as a committee. I want to say this, that there are a number of issues that are on this report and that we extensively asked questions about, and you could tell that there are things that Kenyans, because we were also receiving questions from Kenyans, and you, could, you can see the things that Kenyans are consistently concerned about. And one of them is the cost of living, and so that once the nominees are passed, and especially those in this house, and sworn in, especially those that their docket touches on the economy, those that their, their docket touch on food security in this country. We are facing a severe drought like no other, uh, probably I'm told that uh, resembles one of the 80s. We are facing drought in this country, cost of living, the issues of youth in this country. We also have issues of corruption. Kenyans are really watching these nominees. Why we were asking what you are worth, we will be checking also as this parliament to see in the next five years what you have been able uh, to get and how you've gotten it. And also issues of following the rule of law, not only when it suits you, but as something and also the respect of the constitution. And so as I conclude, for the nominees that will be passed in this house, the other reason why we were vetting you is that we will hold you to account to the things that you said to us because you didn't just say it to, to that committee. We were sitting there on behalf of also all these members. So you were actually speaking to this parliament. You were also speaking to Kenyans and you were speaking also to the international community because this was really followed. Because when you're a CS, as one of my colleagues has said, you're not the PS. You, yes, we agree, you're not the technocrat, but at least you should have a general knowledge and policy of that docket, at least shape, what are you telling us? What is your policy on this matter? And so, to the nominees who will be passed in this house, we will be holding you to account, we will be asking you to account to what you promised Kenyans during that vetting. Don't take it that it was just like a process, it's a process that we were just doing in this house. We have taken note of the promises that you've promised us that you will do if you are approved by this house and you're sworn in, we will go back and ask you questions as a house and even as we sit in our committees to see to it that you live to it and just so that you may never forget it is an honor to serve this country in that position. Out of more than 50 million Kenyans, this house, if it approves you, just know that you shoulder a huge responsibility to serve this country diligently and even to serve the president and the, the Kenya Kwanzaa because they're the ones who have nominated to make sure that they live to their expectations and to the promises that you made to Kenyans. If you said the Hustlers Fund is going to be without interest, please make sure it won't have interest. If you said you will raise, you will bring the cost of UNGA down by 100 days, don't tell us you 